For example, oh my goodness, this is crazy. I just got a text from this gentleman last night. Luke, shout out to Luke in Indiana. Best for you, right? Yeah. So, but we can get another one. I can't even, can't even tell you, everybody. Good things come to those who wait, or those who are patient. I've been waiting six. Also, to those who sleep. More on that in a minute. I had a little double dose of uh, coffee this morning. I'll explain what happened in the middle of the night here in a minute. But, oh, my, I've been waiting six months, at least, maybe even longer, for this moment right here. Oh boy, finally, the moment has come to hopefully serve all of you better by publishing quicker. That's the whole goal here. This Studio 2.0. We got to we got to get you guys faster running shoe reviews. By the way, we double published yesterday. Remember, turn on those notifications so we published in the afternoon another running shoe review um, in case you missed it upper right-hand corner. I'll also link to it down in the description. Woo. Tip of the day, running shoes should not live in your car, especially in the winter time. That, tra that transition from extreme cold to tr extreme heat is just not good for the midsole. I have noticed that the midsoles break down. They just break down a lot quicker when they're in these extreme temperatures. All right, let's go find this closet here. Right now, Saucony Ride 14. Took him out yesterday, pretty happy. Let's go. Anyone want a USA backpack from World Mountain Running Championships? Oh, let, me know. Huh? let me know, I will uh, get you a little hint here in a minute how to how to walk away with this guy. It's a nice backpack, but it's been sitting in my car for way too long. Time to get it out in the world. Let somebody use it. Pikes Peak Training Block 2021 coming to an end. Old tripod that doesn't barely functions anymore, but it's it still will hold something. Shoes for the winter. It never rains in Colorado. 
We're gonna put that there. Uh oh. Neighbor just came out of his house and he was going for a run, everybody. That's exciting. Oh, that is awesome. Oh, he didn't he didn't stop for long because he was on a mission. I could tell he was driven. That is very exciting. Okay, we're off to my run. Then uh, the gym for a little rollout, not a lifting session, okay? That's part of the uh, taper. Just getting in the gym, stretch, foam roll. Um, what else? Uh, just a bit, yeah, even just walking on the treadmill, hit the hot tub a little bit, but uh, then I need to pick up a few things. Like WD-40, we got squeaky doors, everybody, okay. Little uh, efficiency on a Monday morning. Run while your car is getting an oil change. Oh yeah, I love being efficient. Here we go. See you in an hour. Now you didn't really think that we were gonna leave the studio without a proper send-off party, did you? Come on now. Remember what we said last week. It pays to know a good real a great realtor all right i'll link to him again down below so remember we have a two month uh free rent back basically it's like he says you got a fighter on your side you get these things so this house is actually still ours and yes i almost forgot a few items down here that i'm gonna grab i see a todd helton uh bobblehead over there and then a st louis cardinals a yankee stadium picture all this good stuff but yes of course we will do a studio goodbye party at some point. I don't know when that's gonna happen. Stay tuned, I will announce it sooner rather than later. Oh, come on now. So, uh, obviously we are moved, but still have access to the house and I'm glad I remember this stuff down here. All right, for example, oh my goodness, this is crazy. I just got a text from this gentleman last night. Luke, shout out to Luke in Indiana. He made me this is amazing. I kept the sign, Luke. We've been on a journey. We have been on a journey on YouTube. Look what Luke, he was visiting Denver. We were about to pass 10,000 subscribers. Who remembers this uh, poster that Luke made? Let me know down in the comments if you were subscribed. That's me running up a mountain and I don't even remember what it says, but something about 10,000 subscribers. Like, it was a big deal. You know what I mean? So. Oh, oh, there's a date, 3-7-2019. Unbelievable. And it says, seeking beauty, working hard, and loving each other. Awesome, awesome. All right, let's get this stuff out of here. And there it is, Peak State. Very interesting. No idea what's in this box. We'll open this up in a second. Also, there's the backpack. I will give this away here in a minute, but first, uh, the hardest phase of the training block. And I'm realizing that, hopefully you can see me okay. Hold on, let me just adjust this. I'm still, I gotta get the lighting down in this new uh, situation here in the temporary office. Okay, so in this training block for Pikes Peak, I definitely did the hardest run of my life going up and down Pikes Peak with that vest on. You know, it was hard, hard, hard training. I definitely had the hardest week of training of my life in this training block. Uh, 130 miles for the week, and I think it was about uh, 22,000 feet of vertical gain and loss. Gosh, was that three weeks ago, maybe four weeks ago? So, hard run, hard week, and now I've learned after, you know, the legs are didn't have the power in Jackson Hole. I'm just calling a spade a spade. Therefore, I need to have the hardest taper, meaning the biggest taper, meaning the most rest. And this connects to what happened this morning. You all know, at the old house, waking up at, frankly, 3.45 a.m., sometimes 4 a.m., sometimes like 4.25 a.m. Bottom line, waking up very early to get to the mountains, to run, to film for all of you, to get back to the house, to edit, to upload, and do it all over again. So I have to be very precise in my days in order to accomplish what I need to accomplish here on YouTube, but also in training. Uh, but the body now, and this is the, this is the hard part. This is the, this is the challenge. This is where I 
uh, not struggle, but well, I struggled this morning. I woke up at, I'll just say it. I think it was at 2.21 a.m. I went out. I knew I wasn't going to be, I know myself well enough that if I didn't go up, get up and do something, um, I wouldn't be able to fall back asleep. So sure enough, I got up, I worked for two hours, and then I went back to bed, you know, about 4, 4.15, and slept then until about 7.00. Not the, I don't recommend it. I'm not, this is not, a, I'm not advocating that type of sleep pattern, but as I transition from the hard, hard training, the, ta- the, the tune-up race, and now into a full-on serious taper, um, it's going to be a serious amount of sleep in the next, you know, 12 to 13 days in preparation in order to freshen up the legs and to absorb, ooh, there's that word, to absorb the work, absorb the vertical, absorb the gym work, absorb the leg strength that I hopefully am gaining in the gym, okay? There you have it. That's, I know, like that was a long, big vlog lead up to that point, but I just wanna drive that home that this is the hardest phase of the training block because guess what? I don't like to taper in the sense that I like to train. I like to go run up in the mountains. I like to run fast in the mountains. I like vertical gain. I love all of it. I love waking up early and sharing the experience with all of you here on YouTube. But at the end of the day, I got, and I'm still gonna go up, I'm still gonna see me this week. I'm still gonna go up high, but the volume, the vertical gain is gonna be much, much lower. I digress, there you go. Some updates, here we go. Marathon prediction contest for the Olympics. No winners. It was Nagui, I'm not saying his name right, Nagui, Nagui, Nagui of the Netherlands, silver in the men's race. No one out of over 300 guesses, nobody guessed him for the silver. I didn't, I definitely didn't guess his name for the silver. So that, uh, so no one, I just wanted to update you on that very quickly. Um, oh yeah, the backpack, and then we'll get you the comment of the day. But first, let's do this peak state. It sounds like I'm calling, yes, yes, yes. Great timing, Peak State. I need some fresh coffee and some fresh coffee for the new house. There we go, Peak State coffee with benefits. You're amazing. I've heard about this stuff. So this is coffee with antioxidants and beta beta glucans. And then this dark roast is uh, adaptogens and antioxidants. Bottom line, thank you, Peak State. Shout out to you. Okay, here's how you're gonna win. At 4.59 a.m., a picture of this backpack is gonna post on the Facebook page. You gotta go like the Facebook page down below in the description. First person to comment on that post with this picture, with a picture of this backpack. So early bird gets the worm again on the Facebook page today, not on Instagram, okay? On the Facebook page, link down below. You gotta like the page. And the first person to comment, you win this backpack. It's an, It carries a laptop. It's a really, really great backpack. Here we go. Comment of the day. It's kind of long, but I like it. Kevin Green, you get the comment of the day. Thanks for taking the time. And this connects a little bit to oh, the question of the day. Here we go. I, I might do two questions of the day, but Kevin said, never eat McDonald's before her race. This is connected to yesterday. I had a late day at work the night before a half marathon a couple of weeks ago. The race was a four hour drive away and I got to the hotel at 1 a.m. Race was set for 6.15 a.m. But I was starving after the drive so I decided to pull into McDonald's and order one plain double cheeseburger, thinking that wouldn't be too bad. It was that bad. My stomach was devastated from that burger and I developed GI issues at about mile five of the race, which killed any chance of a good run. I ended up running exactly 18 minutes slower than my PR and even had to walk some because my stomach was hurting so bad. So I guess I learned two lessons from that race. Take off from work the day before a race that isn't nearby and don't eat McDonald's five hours before racing or ever. Kevin, I'm guessing you're, a, listen, Kevin, and this is the question of the day. Don't feel bad, okay? Question of the day, what has been your craziest pre-race fiasco? Kevin, I'm guessing you're maybe a little bit on the newer runner side, like you haven't been running for decades, maybe like two years, five years. If you see this, please comment below. But listen, we've all made strange decisions, maybe bad decisions before a race. So Kevin, don't feel bad. And that is the question of the day. What has been your craziest pre-race Fiasco. I know I've made bad decisions. Even, frankly, (laughs) 
in Naples six months ago. I mean, I had too many, I'll just say nuts, two days leading up to the race. And sure enough, I had GI issues and I've been running for two decades, Kevin. So there you go. I love you guys. Thanks for watching that vlog. Just getting settled here in the house and grateful. Oh, grateful for you guys. All right, we will toss it to the, um, we will toss it to the hardest week recap vlog, okay? Where I recapped the training of the hardest week of training of my entire life. Right here, right here, right here. Right here, right here, right here. Butter my bread, peak steak coffee. Thank you so much. All right, see beauty. Work hard and love each other. See you tomorrow.